before we start merging data from this file or from these tables, let's take a look at what's inside of those tables. The first one is called business entity. And this one has information about the business entity. Now, what we would like to do is grab these two columns, which is business entity ID and territory ID, and merge uh, this table using those two columns with the employee table, which also has the business entity and ter territory ID. So we can get from this table what is called the region BE, which is the region business entity. Now, once that's done, we would like to get the sales information at the employee level. So we can see who's doing better in terms of sales for my employees or in my employees at the business region, uh, business entity region level. And for that, to get the sales data, we will need to get the data from the sales table, which is this one. But notice that this table has a different granularity. So it's, it's a different level. It's on a daily level. So we will probably need to summarize the data at the employee level before we can actually merge it. So let's go ahead and do this merge operations with Trifactas, Data Wrangler. Let's do it with Tableau, Prep, or Data Prep, uh, previously known as Project Maestro. And let's do the same with Power Query inside of Power BI Desktop. Okay, so we're going to start now with Tableau Prep or Project Maestro. So what we're going to be doing here is simply click where it says connect to data and our data is inside of a Microsoft Excel file or an Excel as X. So we're simply going to go ahead and, and look for that. So I'm going to click here, data with service book. And again, you can download, this is completely free. Uh, all you need to do is sign up to, uh, to get the free ebook. And then the data is inside of the chapter number one. So here I'm going to click on this one that says merging tables and start and we're going to see that we have three tables so we're going to click on sales and we're going to drag it we're going to click on employee and we're going to drag it and same thing with business entity right here so you're going to notice that right away we have this section over here which is basically a visual way to see what is going on what is the flow of your data and that is really nice it gives you a really uh well put uh, vision of what's going on now what you need to define is what is going to happen after you extract the data because this is the first uh, step of the ETL process. You basically get the data. So we just got the data from that Excel workbook. Next, we need to actually see if we need to uh, do some sort of, uh, uh, let's just go ahead and see if we can actually do some transformations or if we actually need to. Uh, on top of my head, I know that we don't need this. Uh, we don't need to actually do any type of cleaning. We can just go ahead and do the merge operations. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So I can, for example, just drag it and notice that it says new join or new union. Union is to basically stack the data one on top of the other. And the join is exactly what we need to do. A join is basically just a big lookup, but much more powerful. So we're going to be doing this. And this case is saying that, hey, from the employee table, we have this called territory ID. And from business entity, we have this other one, which is territory ID. So it's doing that join based on that lookup. And if you come from Excel, you're going to notice that, or you probably remember that with VLOOKUP, you can only do a join based on one value or just one column. With join closes, uh, you can actually do it with multiple columns. So it doesn't need to be just one. So we've already uh, chosen uh, territory ID and we can now choose business entity to go against business entity. There we go. Notice how everything changes. And that is something really amazing as well as this type of operation. So we need to be, for example, we have a business entity it has to be equal to the business entity values that we see on the business entity uh, table, but we can select, hey, it doesn't have to be, it has to be greater than, it has to be greater, it's a, it can be lower than uh, an equals or lower than. So I really like that, something that you don't see on, on many other tools. And here on the join type, you might need to um, get familiar with joins to figure out which one is the one that you need. In this case, I want to keep everything from the left table, which is the employee. 
and get basically the join the values from the business entity. And with that, I'm going to get a result of 635 rows. And this one is going to be called join one. So join one is the name of this. Uh, I can actually rename this. I can right click, rename step. And for now, we can just say join employee and business entity, just like this. We can change that. And we have a really preview right here. It says that we have 11 fields and the output is 635 rows. Now we need to get the data for the sales for each employee. But notice that in the sales table, we have this at the daily level. So first we will need to transform this. And in this plus sign, you can do an aggregate, which is what we want to do. And we're going to be doing a group by. So we're going to be doing a group by employee. This is what we need. And then all we need is simply give me the sum of the line total and then give me the total uh, quantity, which is order quantity, just like this. So we have this and this is exactly what we wanted. Uh, we can simply now with this two, let's go ahead and simply do a join. So again, you can drag it, new join, and it's going to be the employee. So we're going to keep everything from the join employees and we're going to grab the values from the aggregate one. And now, so it's going to do its thing. So we can actually just leave it as is. And once that's done, we can add another step. And this is going to be just to clean some data because I know that, for example, the employee ID is grabbing me 135 values that basically don't have employee ID, which means that this basically don't have any data for sales. Uh, basically, we don't want those. We don't have uh, sales data for those employees. And that's mainly because not every single employee is a salesperson. So we can, for example, do a right click on this node and click here where it says exclude. We can now focus on just the fields that we want. So from here, I know that it is creating a set of steps on this specific step. The first one is doing this filter. And for example, this employee ID, it's just a repetition. It's just a duplicate. So I can drop this one, remove field, and it's going to add another step on the left on changes. So each level that you see here has this changes that you see on the left. And that is something truly amazing for specific steps like joins or aggregations. It's going to be uh, their custom step level. But for this one, which is just called the step, it's going to have the changes to the left. So from here, I can see that, hey, I don't need territory twice. So let's get rid of this one, remove field. Uh, we can go with ID. Uh, we can actually just leave it as this because we have everything that we wanted. Now what we need is simply put an output, which is just going to be this one. As you can see, uh, it's always going to give me this visual way to basically know what's going on. Some cases it's not really that necessary because it's taking a lot of real state of the view. As you can see, this all, all of this is just white space. It does not give me anything. Uh, but here I can say, Hey, you know what? This is the output. I can put this to be like this and it's actually outputting or creating a new file, uh, which is going to be a hyper file. We can choose this to be a TDE. Uh, data extract, uh, or it can be a CSP, and then it's going to be on this location and it's going to have this name. I'm inside of the Power BI desktop, and what I'm going to do here is simply click where it says Get Data, and I'm going to click on Excel so I can connect to my data source, which is simply this file by the name of Merging Tables Start. So here I see that I have um, basically six or sorry, seven uh objects and the first ones the first three that have this table icon are actually tables and the other ones that we see here with this different icon is actually a worksheet so i'm going to connect to the three tables which are basically the ones that i have or that i need business entity employee and sales and instead of clicking on load i'm going to click where it says edit which is going to launch this new window called the power query editor 
So what we're creating here or what we see on the left are called queries inside of the Power Query Editor. And here on the right, I see something that is called the query settings. And in the middle, I see a preview of my data, how it looks at that specific step. And by step, I mean that on this splice steps, I can actually click on any of the steps and you see how the data looks like at that specific moment in time in that specific operation. So I'm going to simply click here and rename this uh, query. So it doesn't have those numbers. I only want to see the text here or just the names of those tables. And I'm going to go with this employee query, which has the employee data. And I'm going to go ahead and clean here where it says merge queries because I want to simply merge data. So I'm going to merge queries and I'm going to merge this employee table with the business entity. Now, business entity has business entity ID and territory ID. So we need to use those two to merge data with the employee table. To do that, I can simply click here where it says territory ID and we're going to be doing some pairing. So there's going to be a pair is going to be territory ID with territory ID. I can hold down the control key and select business entity ID with business entity over here. Nice. We can simply click OK and we get this new column. It's not the same as we saw with Tableau Prep or Project Maestro because in Project Maestro, we get simply the output, basically the combination of those two tables put together. In here, we have the ability to select what columns we want or which ones we want to expand. So here I'm going to select that I want the region BE. I also want the business entity and the name of the territory. Click OK. And now we get those three. Now we're going to be doing exactly the same that we saw before in Tableau, just to maintain uh, this pairing or how we can do things in these two uh, tools. Uh, so we can just do it the same way. And here in sales, remember that this is on a daily level. We want to see the sales and the unit sold at the employee level. So to do that, I can go to transform and click group by, or the same operation can actually be seen over here on the home tab where it says group by. So click group by, click here, go where it says employee ID and select that as the group by column and then click on advance. So you can click here and say, Hey, I want to get the sales and it's going to be an aggregation and an aggregated column. It's going to be the sum of the line total. Do another aggregation and this is going to be uh, units or quantity. And it's going to be another sum of the order quantity. Click OK and you get it. You got it. This is the result that we want. This is the employee ID, sales, and the quantity. We can go back to employee and continue using the merge operation, but this one is going to be against the sales table. Click on merge. Now with sales, and it's going to be the employee ID against the employee ID. Notice that it's giving me a preview, some information that the selection has matched. 500 out of the first 635 rows. That is because again, we only have 500 employees that are salespeople. The rest of them are, you can call them administrative or just uh, people that don't make sales. So click OK. And again, it's going to give me another column that I can get the data from. And I'm going to simply expand the sales and the quantity. From here, now that I have the sales and the quantity, I can simply click here and say, Hey, I don't want the rows where the value is equals or the cell content is equals to null. And underneath down here, I see that I have 10 columns and I only have 500 rows. And this is the result that I want. Now in power BI desktop, I can select, for example, this one and right click it and it's not going to load it. I can also do the same over here. Enable load. No, it doesn't have to load. And in employee, I'm going to rename this to be simply output. And you can close and apply. And now it's going to load that query as a new table inside of the Power BI desktop. 
Now inside of Trifactus Wrangler or Data Wrangler, I'm going to be creating something that they call a flow. So I'm going to click here where it says create flow. I'm going to name this merge operations, uh, YouTube, and I'm going to create it. The first thing that I'm going to have to do is simply add a data set. So I'm going to add that data set and I can click here where it says import data set or I can simply select from the ones that I've actually uh, basically uh, imported before. So we have the business entity, sales, and employee. Those are the three ones that I need. Click on add, and now it's gonna simply put those three objects inside of this uh, whiteboard that I have, basically. So we can actually start doing the wrangling. So this is the business entity, it's gonna create a preview, as you can see here. Sales, you can click on sales, and it's gonna also have the preview on the right. And on each of them, you can create a new recipe. A new recipe is simply a transformation operation. So here on sales, let's go ahead and do the new recipe. And notice that it's gonna create, so just click it once because it might actually take some time to create it. But it's gonna create this new icon and this little icon that looks like a script. So it's basically telling you like, hey, this is the recipe. If you wanna change the recipe, you can click where it says edit. So click on edit, and this is gonna take you to another window or it's basically just the same window uh, just another uh, pane we can see and it's going to take you to this place where you can see the data and you can also see uh, this is the grid view you can click on columns just to see the columns and what I would like to do is simply do a group by operation as we saw before so let's go ahead and simply click where it says uh, employee ID do a right click and here I can click on aggregate as new table and do a group by operation. So do a group by based on the employee ID. On top you see the data that you started with and below you get the preview. So this is the preview that we have so far. This is the employees and this is the group by columns. You can actually add more columns if you wanted to. In this case we only need the employee ID. And then we're going to be creating some columns that are going to be doing the aggregation. But we don't have a drop down as we saw before from Trap Tableau and Power BI uh, or Power Query. In here, you do need to say, like, hey, I need a sum. And then it's going to require me to input the columns. So I can browse columns and click here, for example, line total. There we go. So that's one of the columns. We can add more columns, sum, browse columns and then order quantity. Click on add once you're actually done uh, doing this transformation. Just click on add here. And it's gonna create that step, that recipe. You have multiple ways to actually look at this. Uh, there's the recipe, uh, there's the, sorry. We can see the recipe. We also have uh, display wrangle, this is the way or display natural language. So those are the two ways that you're going to actually see it. This is the the actual uh, code that is being generated uh, and then actually being applied to your data set. So this is what I need. This is the uh, summarized data for the employee and we have the sum line total. If you wanted to rename this, you can click on this drop down, click on rename and rename this from sum line total to simply sales, for example, click on add and then do the same for this or the quantity and just do it to be quantity or just QTY. There we go. So three steps, that is what I needed. Uh, if you wanna go back, for example, I wanna go back to the previous view that I had where I had the full view of my data set on everything that was done. This is the result of that script or that recipe. You can change this name of sales2. Instead of being sales2, you can you can actually, let me see if I can actually go back. So I click on edit recipe, I think, instead of uh, modifying the name of the recipe or the name of that specific, uh, yeah, edit name and description. There's gonna be summarize sales and click okay. 
And now we're going to simply do uh, the merge operation between employee and business entity. Notice that here you're not able to drag and drop like you did in Tableau. You cannot, you cannot do that either in, in Power BI Desktop, so that's fair. So you can click here on employee, click on add new recipe, and the recipe or the operation that you want to do is called the merge, but here is called a join because that is the technical term. So before we do this, let's rename this to be, for example, uh, merge employee and BE or business entity. And that's the name. Now click on edit to edit the recipe. And now we're going to be able to uh, basically do the join between those two tables. What I found to be the easiest way to merge uh, or join tables here is just go through the script or recipe, click on add new step, and just simply click here and type join. That is going to take you through the assistant or basically this wizard. And it's going to tell you like, hey, this is a current data set and select the data set to join. So it's going to be business entity. So you can actually do a search here. And here it is. This is my data set, business entity. So click on this one, previously preview selected data set, just so you can actually uh, see it. So there we go. So this is the data set that I needed. And now that I have the data set that I need, I can click here where it says join keys. So I'm gonna join those two tables using two columns from each. So it has to be a left outer because I want all of the values from the left, which is employee. And I'm gonna click here because it's doing things not correctly. So it's trying to do a join between the employee ID and the business entity ID. So instead of doing that, I'm gonna say like, hey, let's do a join using the business entity ID with the business entity ID. Then we're gonna add another one. And in this one, it's not gonna be employee either. It's going to be territory ID and it's going to go with territory ID. We can click save and notice that there's a bunch of options like in our case, special characters, white space or match similar values. So those are all valid, uh, but in this case, we don't really need them. So we have a really basic case here, but we're going to try and see more. So we have the employee ID, which is the most important part. We have the first name last name, territory, business entity, region B. And then let's just leave territory ID and business entity just for the sake of having that. So I'm gonna click here where it says add recipe and it's gonna give me that result over here. So this is the preview. Again, it's gonna give me a lot of visualization similar to what Tableau gave me. So you can see here that it's gonna give me a visualization of what are the values inside of all of those uh, columns. So I'm gonna go back to the main window where I see all of the flow. So this is the flow. And now on this one, I'm gonna say that I'm gonna add a new recipe. So the add new recipe, instead of actually working on the result of this one, I'm just gonna create another one so it can do the union or basically the merge with these other summarized cells. So you can actually see it better. So add a new recipe. Again, it's gonna create another one. We can uh, edit the name. So it's gonna be uh, output, which is gonna be the last uh, option here. It's gonna be the output of this whole flow. So click on edit recipe. We're gonna see now this window while it's loading. There we go. And now the same thing. So click on recipe, click on add new step, click join. Hey, here is join. It's going to take me through this uh, wizard and we're going to do it with summarize cell. So click on preview selected data. It's going to do it. There we go. Now select join keys or just click over here. And with that, I'm going to say that this is not correct. So Let's go first with, hey, it's not business entity, it's employee. We need to merge using the employee ID. So employee ID, then you can give me all of the rest. So give me all of the rest if you want. And then the sales and the quantity. 
click to add to recipe. It's going to tell me that I have 636 rows. Um, as you can see over here, we have 136 missing values. And when I click on that, um, on the highlighted uh, bar chart over here, uh, it's telling me that, hey, you have a couple of suggestions. The first one is you can delete uh, rows with missing values in cells, keep the rows, create a new column, or set missing values to null or to zero. So you have a couple of suggestions. This is not something that neither Power BI Desktop or Power Query nor uh, Tableau have right now. And this is quite helpful for someone that is just starting to use this tool. So I can click here where it says add, and it's gonna basically do exactly what I needed. Now, as I can see down here, it says that I have 500 rows, three data types, and 10 columns. So this 500 rows are exactly the same output that I got from Power BI Desktop and that I got also from Tableau uh, Prep or Project Maestro. So this is uh, the output. What I can do here is simply go back. There we go. And from here, if I wanted to, let's go ahead and, and go again here. If I wanted this to be the output in here, if I wanted to load this somewhere, uh, currently I have the free version of Trifecta. So you can click on generate results and these are the available formats. So here, just click on generate results and it's gonna generate that results to a local file inside of my computer. And this is it. So this is this was completed, 100% valid. There are no mismatch, there are no missing. Mismatch is just a way to say errors or anything like that. And you can always just go for it. So open results and you will actually be taken to that.